All right. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Sorry, um, it took us two minutes to let you in. Our apologies for that. Uh, so we will just be letting a few more minutes for, for more people to join. Uh, so let's say we're starting in the next three minutes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Innocent. Thank you. For all that are joining us, thank you for joining. Uh, we're just going to start in the next two minutes. So just to let more people to join at the session. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome, Innocent. All right. Uh, thank you so much once again. I think we can start. If there are any colleagues that are joining, uh, they'll find us just a few minutes in. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Innocent Adrico, and I am a program coordinator at the Internet Society Foundation. Uh, welcome to the first resiliency information session. Uh, we're going to have a two of these, uh, uh, two of these, and uh, this session, particularly today, uh, has interpretation available in uh, French and uh, Spanish. So, uh, just a quick one: uh, if you'd love to to tap in in either French or Spanish, you can just click on the interpretation button, and you'd be able to select uh, the language that you'd love to join in, uh, either French or Spanish, and. Uh, of course, um, uh, same applies to those that would be listening in in English, just in case uh, someone is speaking in uh, in uh, French or Spanish, then you can be able to listen from the interpret uh, from the in interpreter while in the English uh, channel. Uh, so just before we start, uh, a few of housekeeping rules. Uh, one, kindly mute your microphone when you uh, you are not speaking. Uh, be mindful of background uh, noise and distractions around you um, as much as possible. Um, then um, kindly speak at a consider, uh, considerate pace uh, for our interpreters to be able to understand what you're saying. And um, also, 
please note that uh, this session is being recorded for reference purposes only. And uh, we would be able to share the recording after the meeting and um, alongside with the uh, presentations, which would be translated to French and Spanish. And um, you are free to, to use the, the rename feature on your name, there's a rename feature. So you are free to use it to edit your name or even add uh, your organization uh, for identification purpose. Also the chat works in case you'd love to use the chat to introduce yourself. Uh, so lastly, the team will make a presentation about the program uh, after which we'll be taking questions. Uh, to ask a question, uh, please raise up your hand using the, the raise hand feature that's uh, uh, below uh, below on your screen, there's a raise up feature. So you can be able to raise up your hand and be able to ask your question. And in case you're not able to speak, then kindly use the chat to type your question and I would be able to read it out. Uh, so please uh, be, be mindful to, to make the question direct and as brief as possible. Uh, so lastly, uh, I'll now, let my colleagues, uh, Michael and Alia, to go ahead with the presentation. Over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Innocent. Um, thank you all for being here today. I think we'll just do a, a brief round of introductions, um, and then I will get into the agenda. So my name is Alia Loney. I work with the Internet Society Foundation as an Associate Program Officer for the Resiliency Program. And then my name is Maiko Nakagaki. I'm a senior program officer here working also on the resiliency program. Thank you for joining us today. Great, thank you. So a brief overview of the agenda today. Um, we have done our introductions. Of course, we're also joined by Innocent Enrico, who introduced himself at the top of the meeting. Um, we'll do a brief overview of the resiliency program. We'll speak about the program's objectives, the areas of focus, then we'll go a little bit more into detail around selection criteria, and we'll actually also give some examples of some current resiliency uh, projects that are happening now. And then we'll have, we should have ample time for questions and answers, which will be facilitated by Innocent. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat at any time. So uh, the Internet Society Foundation is a supporting organization of the Internet Society. Uh, we work closely with the Internet Society and our work is meant to advance their mission and vision, which is, of course, that, inter that the Internet is for everyone. So the way that we do this at the foundation is by funding initiatives that either strengthen the Internet and its function or strengthen its reach so that it can effectively serve communities. The initiatives that we typically fund are ones that support efforts to ensure that the internet is open, globally connected, secure, and trustworthy. So I will give a brief overview of the resiliency program itself. So first I wanted to start, um, you can see here on the left, these are uh, the some of the programs that we have at the foundation. And today we're speaking specifically about RARE, um, or the resiliency program, which falls under RARE. Um, I wanted to start by really de delving into what we mean when we use the term resiliency in this context. So with this program, we're looking to support organizations with experience and direct knowledge of internet resiliency. So we're looking to support organizations that are deploying resilient internet infrastructure and prov or, or providing training to local communities on how to set up maintain uh, and repair internet infrastructure in the event of a natural disaster or the aftermath of a natural disaster. This might look like hardening data centers, fortifying subsea cables, or training communities through workshops on how to repair infrastructure. So again, when we're looking at, uh, when we're speaking about resiliency, for this program, it's really speaking about internet resiliency. So the application window uh, happens once a year and is currently open. Um, it, it opened on June 11th and it will remain open until June 30th at 9 p.m. UTC. No applications will be accepted after that time. In terms of funding, projects can be up to 500,000 US dollars. That's the maximum. And the maximum duration of the project is up to 24 months. 
So any amount under 500,000 and any amount under 24 months is also very acceptable. In terms of eligibility, which Michael will speak uh, more in depth about shortly, organizations that are 501c3 or equivalent are organizations that we can fund. Um, we can speak more or you'll have a little bit more information about this shortly. The other really key feature of eligibility is that organizations that we fund must be aligned. Their, their mission must be aligned to the Internet Society's mission. Once again, as a supporting organization of the Internet Society, we work uh, towards their vision and mission. And finally, to have an official bank account um, that would be in your based on your legal registration as an organization. Uh, the eligibility specifically for resiliency program is a demonstrated capacity to manage large grants, prior experience with internet resiliency or reconnection projects. And when we're speaking about reconnection, we mean reconnection to the internet, prior experience working on global or multinational projects, and finally, prior experience working in disaster management, emergency response, or recovery. And once again, I just want to emphasize that the last two points are important, but the main driver of a project for this program should be related to internet connectivity. That might be preparing for natural disasters, reconnecting to the internet after disasters, uh, or repairing internet infrastructure, um, either before, during, or after um, a natural disaster. So now I'll pass to Maiko to go a little bit more in detail into eligibility. Thank you, Alea. Uh, so <clears throat> as Alea mentioned uh, regarding eligibility, uh, one of the things um, that is required for us is we can only give grants to nonprofit organizations um, that are equivalent to what we call in the US 501c3. Um, so in the US 501c3 are nonprofit organizations that are approved by our um, <clears throat> tax authority saying that this organization is charitable, um, you know, they uh, don't make any profit and so forth. Um, and when we receive applications from nonprofits from different countries, uh, we hire an external um, consultant who does an assessment um, based on the organizational documents that you send. So as part of your application, we will be required to submit your bylaws, um, articles of incorporation, as well as um, any, uh, you know, uh, return tax forms that you, that is audited, that demonstrates that your organization is indeed um, a non-charitable, organi uh, sorry, a non-profit uh, charitable organization in your registered country. And they will determine if it is indeed, if your organization is indeed a non-profit or not. Um, this is uh, a requirement um, that applies to all uh, applicants um, who will eventually receive grants from us. If you do not pass this, you will not be eligible to receive grants from us. And um, I will also <clears throat> share a link um, in our chat so that you can read more about it. Please note that you do not need to have this um, determination um, before you apply. That's something that we as a foundation will um, pay and um, do investigation on your behalf if we were to be interested in funding your proposal. Next slide, please. And the other key point um, that we would like to note is around alignment. Um, so because of our um, affiliation with Internet Society, we have an obligation to only support organizations and partners that have um, similar mission um, and overall objective as Internet Society. And what does that mean? So there's seven um, overarching activities that the Internet Society does listed here. So one is around um, supporting technical evolution of the Internet as a research and education infrastructure. Um, stimulating community and internet education and application, promoting educational application of the internet, uh, promoting open development and evolution of internet, connecting the unconnected, um, advocating for policies um, that are consistent with our view, which uh, you can read more about, <laughs> but it, it ties back to the first slide that we shared around our mission vision. And then the lastly, um, 
advancing the, de the development and application of internet infrastructure and open standards and so forth, which is very tied to this resiliency project. So um, this is something that our legal department determines when you submit an application, but as you're applying, I would highly encourage you to look at this list and look at your own mission statement and your um, articles of incorporation and determine yourself if you think these um, alignments, there is alignment between what Internet Society does and what your organization does. Because if there is a misalignment, we will most likely unable to support you. I will say that um, our organization does um, see applicants who submit uh, with fiscal sponsors or other organizations that you may be partnering with who does have these mission alignments. And I think uh, that is a great uh, step forward, a uh, way to still apply even if your own organization does not have alignment. Thank you. So I'm going to go forward um, and talk about the program's objectives. <laughs> So you might have seen, but overarching goals for the resiliency program are twofold. One is to ensure the readiness of local communities to maintain a repair connectivity of internet. And then the second one is to reestablish connectivity for communities affected by natural and climate related disasters. I want to emphasize um, this natural and climate related disasters um, as key, because uh, we have received applications in the past that were more related to um, disaster caused by um, like man-made disasters, like um, like war and so forth. And unfortunately, that does not align with our program. Uh, so uh, I would highly encourage you to only apply if your project revolves around improving connectivity as a result of natural climate disasters. Great. And then in terms of how we determine um, if an application um, is strong or not are these five points. Um, and then I want to also be transparent that so Internet Society Foundation looks at your application, but we also um, engage external reviewers who are experts in this field to also look at your application and they give us feedback. Um, uh, independent feedback to uh, to comment if indeed the application is um, meets these criteria as well. So how do we determine an application if it's strong or not? So first, uh, we look if the proposal has identified a clear need and if it's effective. The second is if the proposal increases network resiliency and readiness in the community that it's proposing to work with um, that is prone to natural climate disasters. Third, uh, if the applicant demonstrates um, necessary background, knowledge, and experience to successfully implement this project. This more so um, relates to, let's say, and if an organization who has only managed $50,000 in the past, and if they are applying for a $500,000 grant, we are we will look for other ways to demonstrate that they have the bandwidth and the capacity to manage such a large grant, but it is more unlikely to support a project of that size if an applicant has not demonstrated experience managing a larger grant. So when you are thinking of um, applying for our grants and you have no past experience of managing a larger project, we encourage you to um, apply and submit proposals that are more realistic from your organizational background's capacity. Fourth, um, we look for projects uh, that illustrate how connectivity solution will support the affected community. And then lastly, if the project um, has relevant um, in terms of learning and outcome um, <clears throat> components. So if it is proposing to uh, track outcome indicators that demonstrate sufficient impact and relevant to the funding level. I think the next slide is around some examples of our current or past grantees. Go back to you, Alea. Thanks, Michael. And again, uh, we will have time for questions. So please, if you'd like to start putting questions in the chat, Innocent will start compiling them. So please feel free uh, to put your questions there or get ready to uh, raise your hand to ask on the microphone. 
Um, so these are just two examples. Uh, you can find many more examples of projects that we have funded. I will share the links in the chat to some of our 2023 grantees and some of our 2022 grantees to give you a sense of what kind of projects we have funded. Uh, the first example is capacity building for connectivity in villages across two states in India. So the grantee here is the Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers, and the location is in India. The project uh, was to prov or is to provide training and support for village level technicians and village level entrepreneurs in rural villages prone to natural disasters in the states of Karnataka and Kerala. These village level technicians and entrepreneurs develop skills and knowledge to deploy internet connections and repair them, especially during d disasters. So this is a really strong example of something that would that could be eligible for this program. The second example that I wanted to share was the portable network kit. Um, so this is Communities for Resilience. This grantee is Allied Media Projects in partnership with Community Tech New York. The location, so where they do their work is in the United States and also in the Caribbean. And this project is uh, based on convening and training community-based organizations in the US and the Caribbean to build and utilize a portable network kit. The portable network kit is a wireless network in a suitcase that helps people understand how to build their own mini internet as a tool for disaster preparedness and for connectivity in the aftermath of a natural disaster. So I would just urge you to kind of take a look at these projects and 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 see the through line, which is really that this is uh, that there's uh, an aspect of uh, preparedness for natural disaster and also training of local communities in order to be able to repair and maintain internet infrastructure during and after uh, uh, the the case of a natural disaster. And so without further ado, I'm starting to see some questions. I want to hand it over to my colleague, Innocent, and he will facilitate this section of uh, the this meeting today. All right. Thank you so much, Alia and Michael, for that presentation. So I'll be taking questions. Uh, feel free to raise up your hand. So our first question on the chat has already been answered by Michael. That was on whether South Sudanese NGOs can actually apply. Uh, so yes, the applications are open uh, for everyone worldwide. So uh, I can see a question. We are currently receiving funds from the first round of resiliency grant program. Are we eligible to apply for second round as well? That's a question from Digital Empowerment Foundation. Hi, Sadat. Um, I can answer that. Um, we would prefer you not to apply because your application probably would not be um, a priority for us since we want to be equitable and um, give opportunities for other organizations who are not current grantees to be um, in the runner up. So I would encourage DF to focus on your current project as opposed to applying for a second, completely different project. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, for that. This, the other question is in uh, French. And uh, when you translate it, it says, have any projects been supported in Senegal? That's from uh, Jali. I think I can answer this one in saying that um, in this particular program, I'm not sure, but that we support projects from all around the globe. All right, uh, so the next question is, uh, so uh, for those that are raising up their hands, I'll just take this last question from the chat and then I'll, 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 I'll give you the floor, yeah, thank you. Uh, is United Way Ghana eligible to apply for this grant? Yes, uh, well, United Way Ghana has uh, a grant for skills, right? If, if I'm correct. All right, hello everyone. Yes, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. You're from All right, United so United Ghana has not received any funding from ISOC before. Oh, okay. I, don't want, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if we can apply for this very grant that is available. Yes, uh, the, the applications are open. You can apply, yes. 
Okay. Uh, the last time I saw the application opening online and uh, in, in my attempts to apply for the grant, I was told that before I can apply, I need to receive an invitation from ISOC before I can apply for such grants. So I want to know if that is still in, on hold or if we can go ahead and apply for this very grant. Well, uh, this round of application is open, uh, so you are uh, you are free to apply. The uh, the application you're talking about possibly that was like uh, I would call it closed, like by invite only. Yeah, that uh, that is probably why you couldn't apply. But this round is open, so you're free to apply. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Innocent. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I can take uh, the. The the next question from uh, Vivet. Vivet, did I pronounce that well? You did, Innocent. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask. Um, oh, I'm from in ISOC Namibia. Um, and while we've received grants in the past, it's not been to this size. Um, we. Um, I want my question is. We have been talking to partner organizations who have received large grants, but their role in this would then specifically be to be the receiving organization to administer the funds. Um, is something like that acceptable um, or is there anything else that you could recommend then? So Vivette, um, I can take this and I'll I'll let Michael follow up if if there's anything that I miss. But I think there's kind of two aspects. First is what Michael just said when she was presenting, which is um, to apply if you don't have experience, significant experience with large grants, apply with the project that is line is in line with your capacity. So I hope that that kind of uh, gives you a little bit more information. So if you have received uh, funding in the past, but do keep in mind that part of the eligibility criteria is uh, having managed large grants. That being said, Michael just dropped in the chat and this was going to be my second point. There is more information around what you're describing, which I believe would be a fiscal sponsorship relationship. Um, she's dropped the link there. So that should provide significant guidance on uh, whether or not uh, you would like to proceed with a fiscal sponsor. Thank but you yes, very much. That's possible for, the, for this program. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so I'll take the question from Amadou. Amadou, you're next. Yes, yes. yes. Good, so, good to hear from you once again. Uh, this is uh, Amadou Yisin Tech Hub. Uh, just to clarify on the earlier point, we already have a project with skills. So are we eligible to apply for this? Or once we have another project, we can't apply? Uh, yes, you can apply. <clears throat> um, if you're a, a, a grantee of another ISOC Foundation program, you can still apply to the resiliency program. OK. Thank you. All right, so uh, another follow-up uh, in terms of the eligibility criteria. Now, are you looking at areas that are already impacted or uh, by natural disasters or have been impacted by natural disasters in the past? Only those areas. There are some areas that probably are not impacted by natural disasters, but uh, are very much in need of uh, such uh, facilities as well. Sure. So we... um look to support uh, areas that are prone to natural disasters. So either um, have experienced a disaster in the past or likely to be. Or the whole purpose of the this program is to help communities prepare for not if it happens, not if a disaster strikes, but when the disaster strikes. So in your you know proposal, if you would like to go into an area that has not been struck by disaster, but um, you know, meteorologists or communities are saying, you know, it's going to happen in the next, you know, X, Y, Z years or months, then yes, definitely you can suggest those um, locations, uh, but your proposal would be stronger if you can explain um, why you're going into an area that has not been hit yet, but that you are, you know, seeing trends that it is most likely to be a, um, an impacted area and so forth. So I hope this is helpful. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Thank you. 
Yeah, and if I could just follow up on that, I would just mention um, that this program at the foundation is specifically focused on natural disaster resiliency, but it could be worth it if there are other connectivity projects that you're interested in doing to look at the foundation's other programs as well that wouldn't necessarily have the eligibility piece uh, about uh, natural disasters or areas prone to. All right, so that's great. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Ali and Michael. Uh, so there are three French questions. And the uh, first one is, uh, have any projects been supported in uh, Cote d'Ivoire? Uh, so I would say I can't be sure at this point, but you are free to apply from Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, but uh, uh, there have probably been projects supported out of this particular program uh, on our other uh, uh, grant programs, yeah. And then uh, can an international organization, uh, an international NGO uh, uh, enter into a consortium with a company? Well, I don't understand this uh, yeah, question. Innocent, I just um, answer them in um, English, so hopefully the translator can support. But yes, the <clears throat> overall overarching answer, the main grant recipient and applicant must be the NGO, uh, but you can have a, a for-profit company um, as a partner or subawardee. So some of our grantees, um, you know, uh, have a subaward with um, a submarine cable company, for instance, um, and that is allowed. Uh, but the main recipient of the grant itself must be the NGO. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. So uh, the next question is, what's in the application file? Well, uh, so I would encourage you to check out the application link and be able to 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 get uh, okay. Basically, the the application web page uh, to find out the the instructions and all the requirements. And then, if you're uh, eligible to apply, you can go ahead and sign up on Flux. We use um, we use uh, Flux uh, as our grant management platform. So I'll just drop just drop a link there, and uh, you can be able to use that to apply. So I'll take a hand from um, there's someone called Mojisola. Mojisola, did I pronounce that right? Yes, you did. Thank you. Um, so my question is. Um, this I understand that this project is made. Um, this grant is mainly to fund projects that are focused on like not internet connectivity around natural disasters. But what about um a project that is providing internet to a community that doesn't have internet like at all? So it's like a that kind of project. So I'm providing internet. To a, there's no natural disaster. There might be instances of natural disasters. Maybe they have, maybe it's coming forward, but like they don't have access to the internet at all. Yes, thank you for that question. Um, so that sounds more like a different program um, objective. Uh, so I just shared it with everyone in the chat. Um, so there's another program called Bolt, Building Opportunities Through Leveraging Technology. And that is all about connecting the unconnected um, uh, bringing connectivity for those who are not uh who do not have internet at all and that is opening up july 2nd uh so i would encourage you to look at that program the uh <clears throat> program website is already up so you can read more about the eligibility and so forth and the program's objectives but what you're proposing sounds more in line with that than this okay thank you very much all right, thank Can you. Kindly share the uh, links with us, that would be helpful. Yes, yeah. it's in the chat, please. Thanks. Yes, so I'll take the next question from um from the chat. Let me just pick up one. We have never implemented an internet project from um Internet Society Foundation. Are we eligible to apply? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Um so the next question. War disasters and uh, catastrophic events significantly disrupt infrastructure. Is it valid? Yes, that's uh, 
that's can... unless Alia, you want to say yeah something. i can take that one in a sense so michael had said uh earlier when she was speaking about eligibility that um <clears throat> for this project excuse me <clears throat> for this project uh, this program in particular, um, the projects really do have to be based around a natural disaster uh, or a, an area prone to natural disasters or prone to climate related disasters. Um, we understand, of course, the the need, um, but this program is really focused on natural disasters um, rather than uh, what we might call man-made disasters. So um, for this program, it, the emphasis is really on on preparedness. Uh, for natural and climate-related disasters. All right, Alia, thank you so much. I think I'll go with uh, Abdul. Abdul, please go ahead with your question. Okay, merci. Bonjour à tous. Moi, je suis uh, Abdul Foupan. Je suis um, président uh, d'Internet Society chapitre du Cameroun. Euh, je viens avec une ou deux questions. Déjà, euh, le chapitre euh, camerounais euh, n'a pas encore eu la chance de, de gérer euh, des, des gros projets euh, d'un montant de, de 500 000 dollars, mais nous avons eu à gérer, c'est-à-dire avec d'autres euh, mandats, des projets de 20-30 000. Donc, je ne sais pas si... Euh, nous pouvons évidemment euh, euh, soumissionner. Deuxième question, euh, nous avons une entreprise qui est locale Télécom qui euh, a cette facilité ou qui a cette référence dans la gestion des projets de plus de 200, 300, 500 000 dollars qui, avec qui on veut évidemment... Euh, avoir ce, ce partenariat ou ce groupement pour pouvoir soumissionner, évidemment, que ce soit le chapitre qui soit le récit et le, le, le soumissionnaire principal, c'est-à-dire celui qui va recevoir de l'argent. Est-ce que euh, ce genre de figure peut être euh, validé euh, dans le, le cadre, disons, autre point ou le dernier point, au Cameroun, nous avons une zone qui est la zone anglophone qui étaient touchés euh, en même temps par euh, des, des, euh, des effets naturels et aussi des effets humains de, de la guerre, qu'on appelle la guerre du Nouzo. Est-ce qu'on peut y soumissionner pour reconstruire, s'il y en a, les, ces infrastructures dans la zone où euh, il y a mélangé la guerre et le, le catastrophe naturelle Okay, I can take these. Um, Abdou, can we confirm that you're listening in the French channel so you can hear the responses? Oui, oui, je comprends. Je comprends. Okay. Merci. Great. So to the first question, um, about the the first question was about managing um not having yet managed a large uh, project uh, funding amount abdu i would say kind of what we have said before uh, if you do choose to apply uh, apply in for an amount that is reasonable or comparable to what you may have managed previously um in order to uh ensure that capacity is present um second question uh, in terms of a fiscal sponsor, we will sh we shared the link. The link is also uh, available. Our website is available in French, so you can read um, that document in French as well. Um, but look into the details of the fiscal sponsor. If there was to be a partnership um, that were up that was applying for funding, the NGO needs to be the primary. Um, the primary uh, participant. I'm just looking at, Michael had responded to this question earlier in the chat. The main grant recipient must be an NGO. You can partner with the company to provide technical support, but the main must be an NGO. And then last was about areas that have been affected um, by multiple disasters, man-made and natural. And in that case, 
um, as long as a, an, a region has been affected or is prone to natural disasters, that could work for eligibility. So I can't answer specifically on the case that you're asking about, but generally if there has been or there are areas that are prone to natural disasters, then yes, they would be eligible. Uh, again, I would underscore this program is really about preparing for um, uh, maintaining internet connectivity during future natural disasters. So that looks like um, working on the ground with local communities so that they are able to repair and maintain internet infrastructure themselves. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Abdu. All right, thank oui, you so much. Oui, merci beaucoup. La question était répondue. Merci. Bienvenue. Merci. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so I'll take a question from the chat. I am in Ivory Coast. Please let me know if the project is feasible in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yes, I just answered this. Uh, yes, the applications are open to everyone. What about geographical areas that don't have an internet connection and need one? I can answer this one, Innocent. Um, first of all, let me say that any questions around uh, G um whether or not funding is available in your country, we'll just underscore that funding is is we fund globally. So so please know that. Um, regarding the second question, Innocent, can you remind me? Uh, second question is uh, what what about geographical areas that don't have an internet connection yes. and need one? Of course. For that, I would actually encourage you uh, to look at the foundation's other programs. If the area that doesn't have an internet connection is also an, a geographic area that is affected or prone to natural disasters, you may be able to apply. But if it isn't, or that's not the main focus of what your project would be, I would encourage you to look at the other programs at the foundation um, the other grant programs. This is the only program at the foundation that focuses really specifically on climate related and natural disasters. Uh, so there's a lot of other programs that could be eligible for funding. But if that geographic region were to be have no internet connection and also be prone or have been affected by natural disasters, um, uh, especially to be prone by nat to natural disasters, then yes, it could be eligible. Yeah, so one example I can give is we um, are supporting a, one of our grantees who is expanding emergency warning signals and connectivity in areas that um, do not have such an infrastructure because the, <clears throat> the federal and local government do not have a capacity to bring it to this very remote area of the country. So uh, we um, decided to support them because it is still aligned, even though it touches on um connect you know lack of connectivity uh but it also touches on emergency response and uh climate change um and so forth so we have decided to um fund that project so i would yeah like alaya said if your project um does include uh your main if, if it does revolve around expanding connectivity but for the purpose of um, disaster relief uh, it could be a strong proposal thank you Right. Thank you so much, Michael and Alia. So uh, applications pro uh, application proposals must be only in English or UN language. Well, uh, you can do English, uh, Spanish, and French. Hope that is well noted. And then um, there's a question on uh, whether a digital university with community activities can apply. So to that, I would bring us back to the eligibility um, requirements and encourage you to look at the eligibility requirements on our website. The organization that applies must be a, a 501c3. So again, this is a legal designation in the United States. If you're outside of the United States, it would be an equivalency. Um, so it would be a type of organization. So a 501c3 or equivalent. Um, and then the second is, of course, that the organization's mission must be aligned with the Internet Society. So that is something that would be very important in this case. And then the last is, of course, to have a, have a bank account. Um, but I would encourage you to look at the eligibility uh, requirements for that. I would also 
I'm wondering if maybe it is a university or a digital university that does more community related work, um, unless that work is focused on preparedness for natural disasters, uh, it may not be eligible for this particular program. Anything to add, Innocent or Michael, on that one? I think we're good. Uh, we can just go to the next question. So I'll take a hand from um, Ring. Ring, could you go ahead? Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, mine is a uh, related question to what uh, to, to what my colleague said earlier. Uh, we are in a region where uh, climate change and all, all disasters, you know, are happening and have been also happening in the past four, uh, five years, for example. Uh, so are we, for example, in this call, are we targeting those uh, community structures like you have maybe youth centers, you have schools, you have, you know, uh, government institutions that also need, you know, uh, internet or, or what? I yes, that's what I'm actually asking. I don't know whether you got my question. I think so. So you're asking about wh whether the or not this area. Yes. Yeah. The target, the target the target, the, the target community uh, infrastructures or maybe institutions that we can support, for example, are they schools, are they uh, government institutions, like, for example, we have relief and rehabilitation uh, commission that is in that area, and they don't have internet, for example, but they are one, they're the one actually providing also community uh, support, humanitarian support, you know, for uh, people. And are we also targeting schools, for example, who don't have internet over. So, uh, Michael, I might ask you to interject here as well, but if, if I understand the, the question correctly, um, I mean, so long as the project's primary driver is to uh, work, work towards preparedness for uh, natural disasters in, in terms of internet connectivity, then it, sh it could be eligible. Certainly, we speak a lot about working with communities. So some of the, uh, some of the organizations that you listed in your uh, question are uh, community organizations. So it's possible. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll maybe just give some examples from our website of types of projects uh, that we would fund under this program. So it might look like supporting development of community networks. So with community networks, we're speaking about internet community networks, infrastructure. It could look like hardening a data center or an internet exchange point against environment, environmental threats. So that could be fire, drought, et cetera. It could look like fortifying subsea cables or stations. Um, it could look like upgrading infrastructure. And it can also look like strengthening capacity of communities to maintain, repair, and reestablish internet connectivity. So I can jump in. Um, so like an example that we have currently is the one that um, Alea presented in, about um, from India. So we are training um, uh, village level technicians and entrepreneurs um, who can rapidly uh, deploy and, um, you know, when a disaster strikes, they, you know, we're training them so that uh, they have the skills and knowledge to deploy internet connectivity and repair them. And uh, the main uh, recipients of those, um, <clears throat> the technician support are uh, schools and like hospitals in the villages. So if your project um could your project could follow um, a similar model where you train certain people who go then out to hospitals, libraries, schools, um, like anchor institutions that would serve the community at large. I hope that's helpful. Yes, thank you. All right, yeah, thank you so much. So uh, the question from uh, Luis about uh, uh okay Louis said they would like to present a project for rural areas in the department of uh, atlantico colombia Louis, please go ahead the, the applications are open 
Uh, I'll take the next hand. We have about nine minutes, so I'll take the remaining three hands and we can uh, wind up. Uh, so I'll take the question from uh, Ndeye. Ndeye, is that well pronounced? Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, can I speak French or I I have to speak English? Please speak in French. Uh, it would be okay. okay. Thank, thank you yeah. very much. Alors bonjour et merci beaucoup pour l'initiative. Alors moi je dirige une association de jeunes filles et nous les accompagnons euh, dans l'inclusion numérique, mais également dans la scolarité et l'orientation vers les filières scientifiques. Et il se trouve que euh, nous couvrons tout le Sénégal, donc les 14 régions du Sénégal, et nous avons un problème d'accès à Internet pour certaines filles qui sont dans des, dans des régions très reculées. Et euh, aujourd'hui, nous sommes en train de trouver des solutions pour qu'elles puissent euh, euh, profiter des mêmes opportunités que les autres filles qui sont dans les, dans les autres régions, pour pouvoir avoir beaucoup plus de chances aussi de réussir comme elles. Alors, je suis, euh, ma question, c'est est-ce qu'aujourd'hui, avec euh, ces difficultés d'accès à l'Internet que nous avons au niveau de l'association qui existe depuis 2017, est-ce que notre association peut être éligible aujourd'hui pour pouvoir prétendre euh, à cette subvention, tout en sachant que nous, dans le passé, nous avons eu à quand même gérer des budgets importants euh, avec des partenaires comme l'AFD, l'Agence française de développement et aussi Total Energy. Thank you for this question. I will give just kind of a brief uh, version of the question for those who weren't listening in the interpretation channel. So um, the question being asked is around whether or not an organization that supports um, young women and girls uh, to improve digital skills and encourage them to go uh, into uh, STEM um, uh, and 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 uh, provide access to the internet in more rural regions that are un currently unconnected and whether there would be eligibility there. Um, I would actually encourage you to look at uh, the BOLT program. So my colleagues can share again in the chat um, the link to that program. It opens uh, at the beginning of July. Um, because this program resiliency is so very specific on um, working in regions that are prone to nat natural disasters, what you're describing to me sounds a little bit more uh, like it could be eligible for a different program. And the first one I would suggest looking at uh, would be BOLT. <clears throat> I hope that answers the question. All right, thank you so much, Alia. Actually, the link has just been shared by David. Thank you so much, David. Uh, so um, I'll go next to uh, Sharif Den. Please go ahead. Okay, so uh, my question is a follow-up one with regards to the uh, uh, budget capacity of the applicants. I think uh, you made mention that the person should have demonstrated a significant level of ability to manage a certain uh, 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 amount of budget. Now, following on the issue of the consortium, so assuming I am applying and I am forming a consortium in collaboration with another organization and my capacity as a lead applicant is, let's say, 250,000, uh, then uh, is that the only uh, aspect you are looking at or you are going to consider the capacity of the other applicant as well, the partner applicant? Yes, yeah, I can answer that. Indeed, um, so the main applicants will be the main grant recipient, and they will be then the uh, grant administrator, who the one who is managing the grant amount. Therefore, we um, will only look at and determine the capacity of the grant from the applicant's perspective in the organization. Now, I would still say, though, that um, it's always helpful to submit the name of the potential partner that you already have identified. And if there is already an MOU of an existence with this organization that you want to partner with, it would be great if you can submit it as part of your application so that we know that it's not something that um, <clears throat> we have not even pursued or that it's already in discussions and so forth. But in terms of the um, 
grant amount eligibility, what we look for is the main applicant's organizational background and capacity, not the partners. All right, thank you so much, uh, Michael. Uh, so we have three minutes. I'll take the question from uh, Lusanga. Could you ask your question in uh, 20 seconds? Lusanga, are you there? Je suis candidat individuel. Je travaille en partenariat avec une association. Est-ce que c'est possible de procéder aussi à ces projets, à ces subventions? Et ce serait utile, moi, en tant que candidat individuel? Je travaille en partenariat avec une association, je peux postuler à cette, à cette subvention. C'est ça ma question. Merci beaucoup. I can answer this question. Um, I can only hear parts of it, Lusanga, but from what I understand, you're asking about uh, you're an individual working with an organization and whether or not you can apply. This funding is available to organizations only, so the organization has to be the primary uh, an applicant. If you have more questions, you can email us, but this program in particular only allows um, organizations to apply. And then of course, within that, the organization must be a 501c3 uh, equivalent, et cetera. So please look on our page, uh, our eligibility page. Thanks. All right, thank you so much, Alia. I'll take the last question from Yao. Yao, please go ahead. Yao is there? Yes, we. Oui. Please Hello? ask your question. Yes, please. We can hear you. Okay. Okay, d'accord. Merci beaucoup. Je suis eh, Yao Alexis de la Côte d'Ivoire. J'ai écouté bien le, la présentation et moi, mon, je voulais présenter une doléance au niveau de mon institution. Je suis le responsable informatique de l'Université virtuelle de Côte d'Ivoire et donc nous utilisons la, la connexion Internet pour permettre à ce que nos étudiants, partout où ils sont, puissent euh, travailler sur leur device. Mais le comble, c'est que par moment, ils ont des perturbations Internet. Et là où aussi se trouvent nos serveurs, il y a, pas, il y a des difficultés d'accès à Internet. Donc, je voulais profiter de ce projet pour voir si la possibilité nous permettrait à notre institution de, de soumissionner afin de pouvoir bénéficier de ces avantages. C'est là ma question. Je vous remercie. Okay, I can take this one. So with regard to um, this project that you're describing, Yao, I think you are describing um, a lack of internet connectivity for university students. And I don't know that this is the correct program to apply for because this one is related to uh, natural disasters. So I would encourage you to look on our website um, around other programs that touch on connectivity um, in the, the connectivity for students. Um, yeah, I think that that, that that might be the best way to go. So look on our website to see the other, uh, the other programs, please. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Alia. So we have the hour. Uh, we have the last question from uh, Serikera, if I pronounce that well. I've just shared with you our foundation email address kindly uh, write to us and would be able to respond to your question just in the interest of time. So um, I think we'll take it at that. I'm sharing the email address once again, foundation at isocfoundation.org. Please share your questions there. Thank you so much everyone for joining. Uh, I hope you have a good morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you've joined us from. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. L'adresse mail. L'adresse mail. L'adresse mail. L'adresse mail.